and welcome back. This is Tim Graham, Photo Restorations by Tim G. And I'm going to show you today how to get started with the Gramps genealogy software that we downloaded in the last video. And what's the first thing you want to do when you get started with your new genealogy software? Is it read the instructions? No. Is it figure out what all the little buttons do? No. First thing you want to do as soon as you open your new genealogy software is start putting people in it right away and that's what I'm going to show you how to do today. The first step is to create and manage a family tree using the family tree manager. After that we're going to add our first person. Then we're going to add an unconnected second person. With these two people we will create a family we're going to do it using both the create new button and the add existing button. These are the buttons. Create new, it's always a blue plus sign, which you'll see. And add an existing. That's this button here, which is a finger pointing at a list. These are the two ways that you will add people to your families. And be sure to use the right one because they do different things and I'll explain that to you. After creating our family we're going to add personal events, birth and death events, and we're going to add a family event. And that would be marriage. After that I'll show you how to do these things through the pedigree and graph views. Then we're going to add some places and finally we're going to add our sources because that is just as important as adding the people adding how you know about these people. So don't forget to do that. Don't leave that undone. Do it right away and I want to show you how to do that. So let's get started with the software. I'm going to launch it here. And do be patient. This does take a few moments to load. The first thing you're going to see when you load this software is the Family Tree Manager. And if you've never used this software before that this list is going to be blank. And if you have been using the software like I've been using it, you will see the family trees that you have made. Now I have a main family tree here, the grand family tree. I also have these other family trees and what I do with those is use those to research collateral families. If I'm not sure if a family is supposed to be in my family tree or not, I need to research them to figure it out and if I'm not sure I will create a separate family tree for them and do the research there. And if I confirm a relationship that these people belong in my family tree, I will then move that information into my main tree. But uh, for now, these additional trees are collateral families, and this is my main family tree. Now, if you're doing research for neighbors or friends, you'll want to create new family trees for them as well but I don't have any of those. I'm just working on my own family and I have a few collateral families here. Now for us, I want to create a new family tree that we're going to use for practice. So I'm going to click on new to create a family tree. And if this is your first family tree, you would just create you click on new to create that. And family tree number 1 is the suggested title. You can erase that and put any title you want. So I'm going to put practice tree in here. And that's how you know this will be our practice tree. So I will go ahead and press enter to accept that new name. Then I can load the family tree, but before I do that, I'll just point out these other buttons. They're mostly self-explanatory. Copy, if you want to duplicate one of your family trees, maybe make some changes to it while preserving its current state. You can copy a tree, branch off, do some additional work on it while preserving a copy. If you want to delete a family tree, you can delete, but be warned, this is not reversible. So be sure you want to do that. I'm going to cancel. Renaming your family tree is easy. Just click on rename, type the new family tree as you see fit. Press enter to accept your changes. Also down here is a repair button. I haven't had to use this often, but occasionally your family tree database will encounter some problems and this repair button usually can fix those problems. 
and I haven't had any uh, devastating data losses from using this program this repair button does a pretty good job fixing that you'll see in here some little trouble uh, in your status and it will suggest to you that you use this repair button to repair so that's what that's for archive I haven't used yet uh, and as soon as I ever use it I'll be sure to make a video explaining all about it but for now uh, I'm gonna move on I'm gonna load this practice family tree load family tree it takes a moment or two even a blank family tree it takes a moment uh, and you will see uh, some changes here once that's loaded. Now I have rearranged my dashboard and I'm going to do a separate video on a dashboard another time but for now observe here in your menu bar family trees manage family trees this will return to your family tree manager in case you want to do any of the aforementioned tasks and notice here we have a little status indicator saying that this family tree file is open and currently in use that's what this little folder indicates. So I'm not going to do anything further with that. We're already loaded. We're ready to go. I'm going to close the window. And I'm going to get started with uh, adding our ancestors. Okay. So having created the family tree and showed you how to do some management, let's add a first person and then let's add a second unconnected person. When you start your family tree software, your database will be empty, of course. So here's an empty database. If you look at your charts, you will see no chart, nobody. Okay, we're about to change that. Click on people. We're going to add a new person. To add a new person, you can click on the plus sign that will launch a person editor for your very first person and the person that I'm going to add to this practice family tree is my great grandmother Julia Kaur. Oh, she's famous now look at that okay and I will click OK to accept this new person plenty of other stuff to do down here all in good time if the software does not know how to assign the gender of this person it will ask you so this is a female my great-grandmother Julia and here she is she is in my family tree she's under people the people view has a couple formats you can list each person individually or you can group them by surname this button here will show group by surname group by surname will have a little triangle next to each surname you can click on that to expand the surname and list the people using that name I prefer to look at it in this view because it's so compact but these buttons up here will alter the view if you're just listing all your names or if you're grouping by surname okay so we have our first person Julia Kaur in the family tree and I'm gonna add a second person and I'm gonna do it in a way that you're probably not going to do it very often I'm going to add an unconnected person if you come across in your documents a person that you're certain is related to you but you're not quite sure how you don't have to wait to discover that relationship you can add that person as an unconnected person so we're not going to specify any relationship to Julia we're just going to add a second person using the plus sign and this person's name is John John Core. and I will click OK specify a gender male good I have two people in my family tree now and they're unconnected so if I click on one of these people and view their chart you will see here's Julia's chart with a place for two parents if I return to people and then click on John view his chart this is an unconnected chart these two people are not connected but they are both in my database okay so that's how easy it is to add people 
We have no frills on them yet, just their names, but we're going to add some more information. Next we're going to create a family. So I'm going to join these two people together and add a third person and that's going to be our first family. Okay, I'm going to switch over to the software. We have two people, John and Julia. Let's look at the relationships. You will see, of course, there are none yet, but that's about to change. These three buttons with these people, these are going to be how you add relationships. Take a look at the three of them. One is add a new set of parents. One is add the current person as a child to an existing family. And the third is add a new family with this person as parent. This button here is the one you'll use when, you, when a person gets married or has a child in your family tree. You will join those two people together and they will become a new family. For us today, Julia Core is going to be the daughter of John Core. So I'm going to add a new set of parents for Julia. That's going to be this blue plus sign with these people here. Add a new set of parents. Good. So this is our family editor. You'll notice it's a little bit different from the person editor because there are two people involved at the top. These are the parents. And then the children are listed down below. Let's add the father first. Now to add the father, I'm going to use set a person as the father. This is an existing person already in the database. That's John. I should not use this blue plus sign because this will add a new person as the father. If the person I want to use as the father is already in the database, I should not use the blue plus sign to add a new person. I should use the finger pointing to the list to select a person who has already been added. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this finger pointing at a list. And my list is very small, but it will grow. Here's the only other available person. I will select that person and click OK. And that person is chosen to be the father. Now I can come over here to add a mother. In this case, I don't have any other people in the, in the database to select as the mother. So I will use the blue plus sign to add a new person who will become the mother. When I click the blue plus sign, it launches a person editor where I can enter new information for this new person. So Julia's mother's name I know is also Julia, Julia Foley. Once I have that person entered, I will click OK to accept. One last thing I might like to do is put in a type. If you happen to know that they were married, you can add that information here. I usually go ahead and assume they're married until I learn otherwise. The vast majority of parents in my family tree were married, so I go ahead and click on married, and if I find otherwise, I make a note of that. Uh, that may be a little haphazard for you, uh, but it works for me. Um, so there is flexibility here, depending on what you notice in your own family tree. How do you want to fill in this type? Okay, having set the mother, the father, the type, and observing Julia down here as a child, I will go ahead and click OK to accept my new family. Now these people have all been joined. Julia is my currently selected person. If I view her chart, you will see John the father is there and Julia the mother is also there and we have some spaces here to add grandparents. And we will do that in just a little bit. Let me return to our syllabus here. We've created a new family. 
using both the create new button and the add existing button. Let's add some events. Start with birth and death events and then we'll do a marriage event. I'm going to click on people and I'm going to edit some events for John. Now you have an option here if you want to right click on John a menu appears and you can edit John here through the right click menu or you may click the edit button up here at the top of the screen. Uh, since I'm here already I'll just click the edit button at the top of the screen. Normally I'm a, a, a right clicker so you'll see me do that a lot. I will usually prefer to right click and choose edit from the menu but however you like to do it, it's up to you. So here is our person editor. This is John Kaur and you can see there are many things we can add to this person. A variety of names, source citations, attributes, addresses, notes, gallery, internet sites that reference John. A lot of things to add but for today we're going to focus on events. That's going to be what shows up naturally when you open the person editor. It will list their events for you. And if you go ahead and click one of these buttons you can add an event. Now take a look here. Observe this pattern. Whenever you're going to add a new object into your database, be it a person or an event or a place, you will have an option of either adding a new item or selecting an existing item. Don't confuse these. You don't want to duplicate an object in your database many times if you don't need to. If the item you're looking for is there already, you should be sure to use it using the appropriate button. Now since there are no events yet to share, I will add a new event and this is going to be his birth event. So click the plus sign and this is the event editor. Okay, you have some options here to show how this person is involved in this event. Primary means he's the main event, he's the guy. He's the guy that's doing this event and for our first event he's going to be born. That's going to be his first event and the software suggests that to you as a first event to give somebody. You have an option to change events through the menu by clicking on this down arrow and viewing the choices in the drop down box. Uh, but let's stick with birth for now. We can add a date. Birth date for John is March 3rd, 1856. Okay. ID will be filled in on its own. I may have more to say about that in a later video, but you do not need to put anything here at this time. Uh, place, we're going to get to that in a little bit. And description, if you have any special uh, things to say about this birth, uh, you may do that. For example, if he was born at home, uh, you can say he was born at home, or if he was born while on a journey, you may want to put a little note in here just to say something special about this birth, but you can leave it blank as well. You don't need to put something in here. If anything strikes you as being noteworthy, you can describe that. And with that, I will just go ahead and click OK. Um, normally, I'll, I'll go ahead and add a source, but one at a time, one thing at a time for this video. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. Good. I'm going to add another event. A brand new event, so it's going to use the blue plus sign. And here it suggests for you the next event for this person should be their death. You don't have to put in their death. You can choose anything you want from this list. Some of these options down here, uh, you will see submenus for those. Naturalizations military service, education. So any of these events, you can add these at any time. If you come across an event that's not in the list, you can add it. 
you can add it by typing it right in this box. So for example, one event that I add is membership and organization. So I happen to know of John Core that he was a member of the Knights of Columbus. So I will just go ahead and type that in here, member, and describe that as Knights of Columbus. Good. I can add some dates. But for now, let's leave it the way it is. OK. So he now has a second event. And for a third event, I'll just demonstrate for you that if a third event was something I had already added in previously, I could select it from this list. But I'm not going to do that now. This is just for demonstration purposes. The list will look like this you can choose from that list. Let me cancel this. And I will add, using the plus sign, a new event, and that will be his death, December 31st, 1924. Good. OK. So we've added some personal events for this person. Birth. He's a member of this organization, death. Click OK to accept your changes. Now, when you see this individual in a chart, that information should be displayed. Here is his information. Wife is Julia. Daughter is Julia. OK. What are we going to do next? We've added birth and death events. Let's add a marriage event. A marriage event is going to be a little bit different because that's a family event. It's not an individual event. So for that, I'm going to take a look at the families category. I'm going to click on that, and you should see in here a family. What constitutes a family is that these, per these people are together and they have a child, Julia. A child is not necessary to be a family, just that these two people are related in some way, usually marriage. Okay. It could be common law marriage. It could be that they just live together. But these two people are partnered up in a family. Let's edit a marriage event for them. It says that they're married here, but we don't really have so far any details on that. Let's add some detail. I'm going to right click and choose edit this family from the menu. Could have clicked on this button, but I didn't do it. I'm a right clicker. And you will see here that the family editor should appear. OK, we got it that time. Here is our family, father, mother, daughter. Notice here there are some additional things you could add for this family. One of them is events. When you want to add a marriage, put it in the family events. I will go ahead and click on the plus sign to create this event. And you can see it suggests to you already what event that should be. Marriage. And I have a date for that. That is November 1st, 1888. And I will click OK to accept that marriage. Good. Now, when you view the details of each of these people, John Core and Julia Foley, you will see the marriage listed under each of them. So let's give that a try. People. I'm going to right click John and choose Edit. Oh no, this is Julia. Cancel that. Right click John and choose Edit. And you will see marriage. To Julia Foley under him. Okay. 
if I choose Julia Foley and view her details by choosing edit you will see marriage to John Core. So putting a marriage event in the family will also add that event to each of the people individually. So you just want to keep that in mind that adding a marriage is a little bit different than adding an event for an individual. You would want to do that in the family section rather than the individual section. Okay. Next, let's take a look at how to do some of these tasks in the pedigree view and the graph view. This is the pedigree view. It shows the selected person, any parents or grandparents that this person has. You can use the arrow buttons to navigate. This arrow button will jump to child. If there are more than one, you will see a menu to choose, but I have only one, so you will not see the menu. It'll just jump to that one child. Here is our information. Now, what you can add to this through the pedigree view is some additional grandparents. You can do that by right clicking right on these gray spaces and you can add this person right away. Right click, add. Now you can define a new family, parents of John Core. These are going to be new people for us, so I'm going to start with first the father, Patrick. Last name is already entered for us. The mother is going to be Ellen. A new person, Ellen Adams, that's her name. And OK. Relationship type, I go ahead and say they're married. And then I click OK. So now we have an additional family here. If I choose families in my categories, you will now see two families. One pair is John Core, Julia Foley. The other pair is Patrick Core and Ellen Adams. That is how you add people from the pedigree view. You just right click on these empty spaces. I can show you how to add people from the graph view. Graph view must be installed separately. If you haven't gone through your preferences to install your add-ons, go ahead and do that. Click on check now. Select your add-ons and then go ahead and click install. Now, I have already done this, so no need to do it now. It'll take up some time. I'm going to close my preferences, but to see the graph view, you're going to have to add that in your preferences as an add-on. Once you've done that, you can click on this graph view, and you will see the selected person will be here in bold. If you click on that person, it'll expand out that person's parents. You may switch the current person by clicking on that person. And if you click on a selected person, that will review the parents of that person. So you can navigate your tree this way using graph view. This is my favorite way to work. And who can you add in your graph view? Well, you can add siblings. So I'm going to do that uh, through the graph view here. I will right click on the oval. Right clicking on the oval will edit the family. You will see the family editor appear here. And I will add siblings for Julia. I happen to know that she has a sister named Mary. who is female. This screen allows you to define whether 
a child was naturally born to the parents or whether there was an adoption. Mary was the birth child of both of these parents, so I will click OK. I will add another sibling, Helen, Helen B, and I will click OK. Helen is a female. Birth child of both parents, John and Julia. One more thing to see about the family view here is that you can change the order of these children. I like to keep them in chronological order. Oldest child up top, youngest child down bottom. Julia is the youngest of these three, so I will use these arrows to move her down to the bottom. Arrows will move, rearrange people. So this is the order. Mary first, then Helen, then Julia. Once I like my family, I will go ahead and click OK. You can also add siblings using the Relationships category. To do that, take note of who you have selected in the graph view. Now I have Julia Kaur's mother selected. If I click on the Relationships category, you will see under Julia Foley that you can add more children. Also, if I choose either Julia Kaur or one of her siblings, let's go with Helen, you can then see under relationships that you can add siblings to Helen. I'm going to do that now. I'm going to add John A. Kaur as a sibling. There he is. Okay. you will see that he will appear as the fourth child. And if you want to change that, you should go back into Families, Edit the Family, and from here you can move him to his appropriate place. And he's older than Julia, so I'll leave him here. OK. And when you return to your graph view, you will see that John has been added. And one other thing I like to do through the graph view is add marriage events. That's easy to do. If you right click on the oval, that shows you the family editor. And from here, if I wanted to add a marriage event for Patrick Corr and Ellen Adams, I could do that. And I don't have that information right now, so I'll cancel that. But just so you see how it's done. Also note that you could right click on any of these people. Right clicking immediately opens the person editor in the graph view. So if I wanted to add events to Patrick at this time, I could. but I'll move along. Okay, we've seen how to add people and events via the pedigree and graph views. Let's have a look at adding places. And you'll see there are a couple different ways to do this. But first observe that in the person editor, under events, events have a place associated with them. I don't have any yet because I haven't added any. I'm going to show you how to do that right now. Let me cancel this. Easiest way I find to add places is through the places category. I happen to know that John Corr was born in Ireland, so I will add Republic of Ireland to my places list and I'm going to go from largest to smallest. So I'm going to start off by adding a place for Republic of Ireland. And this is a country. And I want to write this in here twice. You'll see why in a minute.
OK. Now, I happen to know that John Corr was born in County Tyrone. So I'm going to add that county to my places list. And first, I'm going to click on Ireland to select it. When you click on a place before adding a new place, the selected place becomes listed under enclosed by. So I'm going to add a county, Tyrone. And here in the title section, I'm going to add both the county and the country. So you see the difference between these two fields. Title field includes all levels of places, town, county, country. The name includes only the specific name of the place you're adding now. So I'm adding the County Tyrone right now. So I'm using Tyrone for the name. OK. And as you see, Tyrone has been added as a new place under the country of Ireland. I want to add another place. I want to add a town under Tyrone. So first I click on Tyrone. Then I add my place. You'll see Tyrone has been added as enclosed by. And the town is Stewartstown. Under type, this is a town, but I want to remind you that if the type of place you're looking for is not here, you're welcome to write in a new one. So for example, if this is a census designated place or something like that, you may write in census designated place. Uh, I don't have to do that in this case. I'll, I'll use town. And again, for the title, I will write out each level of place, town, county, and country. Let me capitalize here. And good. So now that I've created this place, and each of the places that encloses it, I can go ahead and add this place to the birth event for John Corr. So I'll find him under people, and then under John Corr, I'll right click and edit him. Under events, I will choose his birth event and I will edit. And here I have opportunity to add a place. Now I don't need to use the blue plus sign because we've already created this place. I will use the finger pointing to the list. And here I will choose the specific place where John Corr was born, and that would be Stewartstown. In any case that you're unsure of the town, you may select the county or the country. In this case, I happen to know that Stewartstown is the correct town. So I will click on OK. And you will see that that place has been associated with this event. I'm going to show you another way to do this, another way to add places. And this way, I think it's a little more complicated. And you can see how complicated this can be. Now, he died in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. So I need to add those places. I can do that from here. But I think it's a little more work than is necessary. For adding a new place, I can use the blue button.
Here I will add the place called Philadelphia. This is a city. I will add up here Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Now since Pennsylvania is not added yet, I will have to use the plus sign to add a new enclosed by. So here I will add Pennsylvania and this is Pennsylvania United States. And this is a state. Okay, so I've added an enclosed by here. I will click OK for that. And here I'll also add United States up top. And this creates only two of the places that I need. But I'll add the next one in a little bit. Let me click OK. You can see Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, United States has been added. But as far as the database is concerned, there's no actual place in the database called United States. That's just for naming purposes. Let me click OK. You're going to want to add United States as a specific place. Let me click on my places. Oop. First, let me click OK to accept my changes. OK, after clicking on places, you'll see I have not created a United States place. I've created only Pennsylvania and Philadelphia. Now I'm going to have to do some corrections. You can see why this is a little more work, I think, than it needs to be. I'm going to have to create a new place called United States. And I'll make this a country. Notice that I have Republic of Ireland here as an enclosed by. That's because I had this selected. If that was an error, you can remove this from the list. It will not be added. I have a place called United States. Now I want to add Pennsylvania to that. And to do that, I will edit the place called Pennsylvania. And I will add United States down here as an enclosed by. I'm going to choose it using the finger pointing to the list. If all is well, then click OK. Click OK once again. Now my place tree is proper. United States, Pennsylvania, Philadelphia. So, there are several different ways to do this. My preference is to create new places in the place editor first and then add them to your events later. Things make a lot more sense that way. If you go about adding new places from within your people editor, I think it's a little more work and it's not quite as intuitive. Okay, so we've seen how to add places. Last step is to add sources. You're going to notice that each object in your database has a source associated with it. So for example, if I edit my person, John Core,
you'll see that John Core as a person object in my database has a section for source citations. Also, each event has its own section for source citations. As do many other things, media objects and the like, names, these all each have their own place to put source citations. So what I like to do, under the source citation for the person, John Core, I would just put some account of his existence that doesn't give any details. So for example, if I found his name in an obituary for someone else, Perhaps a sibling died, and it said, in that obituary, survived by a brother, John Core. I don't know anything else about John Core other than his existence. I would put that here under source citations for this person. Just to say that this person exists. Add a new source. And here I'm going to make up an obituary. I need to add this anew, and let's just say, for example, Philadelphia Inquirer, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and that's going to be my source, and I can put some date and page information here as well. Let's say that this obituary appeared on January 6th, 1920. And it didn't, but this is just an example. And let's say it turned out to be on page, let's say, 16. I've just created a source identifying the existence of this person, John Core, not giving any additional information about it. But, as I said, each event carries its own source with it. So, for example, this information that John Core died on December 31st, 1924, that came from a death certificate. So, I will edit that event by right-clicking, and here you can see this event carries its own source citations. So for this event, I will create a new source, and I will call this Pennsylvania United States, period, Pennsylvania death certificates, 1906 to present. That will be my source. And for the date, I'll put the date of the document. December 31st, 1924, and for the volume page, I might put a certificate number in here. I happen not to know it offhand, so I'll just say certificate 1234. And that is my source for the death information. The same source also carries birth information. So if I right click and edit the birth, I can choose the same citation to identify the birth. And you do that, may I remind you, by choosing this finger pointing to a list button. And here I will choose the same citation, same document, same source. 
If I need to make any updates to it, I get an opportunity to do that. I will accept it the way it is. And then I will accept this change to the birth event. And now I have sources. And you can see when you add something to one of these categories, a little colored icon appears. And that's how you can tell you've done something here. These other items do not yet have a little icon. As you add items, you will see these icons appear. But the person is sourced. Also, the birth and the death are sourced. You can see. Good. That is all you need to know to get started. Get started adding your people. Get started creating families. Get started adding events. Get started adding places. And get started adding your sources. Thank you for joining me. I will see you in the next video. Thank you.